Honey detective, and he's sending an innocent butler to the hot plate. Hot seat. <laughs> Good night, Gracie. Good night. Well, Lieutenant, I didn't think any more about it. I was tired and it was past my bedtime. What time was it? After nine. So I went to bed thinking Gracie would follow me. Instead, she followed Sam Spade. What do you mean? Well, let me tell you that part, Lieutenant. I finished my regular radio show, after which the actors lingered for a full session. You know, who stepped on whose lines and so forth. It's about 10 when I step into the California nightly air. It's about 10 also, but uh, there's no snow, so I decided to walk home. I haven't taken two steps when this little lady grabs me by the sleeve and says, are you Sam Spade? If I'd known then what I know now, I'd have thrown myself under a bus. <laughs> <laughs> I figured maybe she's a fan, so I answer, why, yes, I'm Sam Spade. You got the wrong man. The butler didn't do it. Huh? The butler didn't jerk that kipper. Jerk that kipper? Yank that copper. Oh, you mean pull that caper? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you sent an innocent man to jail. Lady, I think you're a little mixed up. I'm just an actor on CBS. Huh, that's what everybody says. Look, look, I'm, I'm tired. It's been a long, tough week. Now, just a minute, Sam Spade. I heard you arrest that butler. Now, you've got to let him go free. Tell you what. Why don't you write me a letter with a dull pencil? Don't use it anything sharp. I'll do better than that. I'll come to your house. Where's that? Oh, no, I'm not talking. <laughs> I want to get some sleep tonight. So long. So long. Why are you following me? Got a cigarette? Sure. Here you go. Thanks. Got a match? Sure, yeah. You want me to light it for you? No, thanks. I don't smoke. <laughs> Why'd you ask me for a cigarette? I thought I'd better have it in case somebody asked me for one. Well, good night. Good night. <laughs> now what? Got the time. It's exactly 10.10. 10. Thanks. Thanks. I mean, it's 10 minutes after 10. My watch says 15 after 10. You got a watch? Sure. Why'd you ask? Well, good night. <laughs> good night. Lady, stop following me. Oh, it's you again. <laughs> Can't I give you the slip? I could never accept a thing like that from a strange man. <laughs> <laughs> I had enough of this, lady. You've seen the end of me. Yeah, for two blocks. <laughs> Taxi! Taxi! Let's get out of here, cabbie. Fast. Here's my house, cabbie. <laughs> Gee, that was great driving. Here, keep the change, and good night. Good night. Oh, no, how did you get here? On the back of that cab. <laughs> <laughs> who are you, anyway? I'm too smart to tell you who I am. If I did, you'd complain to my husband, George Burns. <laughs> oh, so you're... Gracie Allen. How did you find out? I'm a detective. <laughs> oh. Are you going to let the butler go? Look, Gracie, there's, there's really no butler in prison, and I'm not really Sam Spade. You're not talking to a child. I'm older than I look. Okay, Gracie, I see there's no use trying to outsmart a girl like you. I'll, I, I'll see that the butler gets out. Now, good night. Well, Lieutenant, I thought that that would be the end of it. It wasn't, eh? Brother, you haven't heard anything yet. Wait a minute, Mr. Burns. 
Uh, before I listen to any more of this story, I have to have some aspirin. Here, have some of mine. Walk <laughs> around with a pocket full of aspirin. I'm married to Gracie Allen. <laughs> And now back at the city jail where George and Sam Spade are trying to explain how Gracie put them there. Listen, let's see if I've got this straight so far, Burns. Your wife listened to Sam Spade's program, thought he was really sending an innocent butler to the chair, and started hounding him. That's right, Lieutenant. What did you think, Spade? I, I didn't know what to think. Survey tells me I've got 10 million odd listeners. I didn't think any of them were that odd. <laughs> well, well, anyway, to get rid of her, you told her you'd free the butler. Yeah, that didn't satisfy her. She demanded to see the guy. That's when Spade asked me to make Gracie leave him alone. Mr. Burns, why do you put up with a wife like that? I happen to love her. What did you decide to do? Well, <laughs> hey, there's only one thing that we could do. Dig up the actor who played the butler and let Gracie meet him. And that's when we really got into trouble. What happened? Spade was given that guy instructions. Okay, you. Now remember, you're Jenkins a butler, and I've set you free. Don't worry, I'll have Mrs. Burns crying like a baby. They don't call me the male Ma Perkins for nothing. <laughs> Gracie's in the next room. Honey, here's Sam Spade. Yes. And I have freed the butler, and here he is. How do you do, madam? I recognize that voice. It is the butler. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm so happy for you. What do you do now that you're free? I shall return to the home of my youth. Where does your youth live? To my birthplace, madam, dear old England. America is nice, but I'll take Liverpool. Oh, you don't have to go to England for Liverpools. They're made right here. <laughs> Liverpool is the name of my city. Uh, y yes, now, thank Mrs. Burns for getting you out of jail and then disappear. Madam, your beneficent intervention has terminated a most injurious and humiliating incarceration. You'll never know what this means. Mm, not unless you shorten the words. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Jenkins. Farewell, all. I go to a new one better life. Goodbye. Right to me from Kidney Creek. <laughs> Close enough. I'll be running along too. Goodbye, Gracie. Just a minute. If the butler didn't murder Mr. Benson, who did? Huh? You proved his wife and daughter didn't do it. There was only one other person on the scene, so he must be the murderer. Who? You! Me! Confess, Sam Spade, you murdered Mr. Benson. I, I had no motive. Then you did it with something else. <laughs> Give me my lipstick, George. I'm going to give him the third degree. Your lipstick? I want to look nice when he shines that bright light in my face. You're supposed to shine a light in his face. Well, then give him the lipstick. <laughs> I'm getting out of this madhouse. Goodbye. Spade ran out of that house like he saw a ghost, which was true because from then on, Gracie haunted him, trying to get him to confess. She disguised herself with a great big hat and a veil and knocked at my door. Sam Spade. Yes? How do you do? I'm the wife of your sponsor. Uh, no, no. I understand you murdered a Mr. Benson. Now that's strictly forbidden in your contract. <laughs> uh, you look a lot like Gracie Allen to me. Flattery will get you nowhere. Now, if you'd like to confess, perhaps we can get you off with life imprisonment. And when you get out, you could take over your program again. <laughs> uh, Gracie, I did not murder Mr. Benson. Now go away. But the next day she was back. This time with another disguise. Sam Spade? Yes? I'm from Western Union. I have a telegram from President Truman. Dear Sam, confess. Signed, Harry. Any answer? Scram, 
beat it, <coughs> go away. <gasps> That's no way to talk.